we pray. <coughs> our loving Heavenly Father, our gracious and wonderful King God, we thank Thee for all the words recited and the testimony shared, the songs that sung. O Lord, everything may be blessed of Thee and bring edification in the body of Christ. Even as we now look into the Word, be with us. The Word that is eternally settled in heaven may be released unto us, and we may be satisfied by the fatness of Thy house. Thou knowest our individual, Lord, family, church need. Minister unto us according to our need. Thank Thee for the con we are unconscious of the prayers of the saints all over the world for us. Answer all our prayers beyond our asking or even thinking. We bring ourselves under the sprinkling blood and worthy servant as I am. Sanctify me by thy blood and use me as him as good in thy sight. Bringing ourselves under the sprinkling blood and pray with thanksgiving in the precious and sweet name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We praise God for the wonderful recitation of the verses by the Jess and also testimony by Sister Prashanti. As we hear the testimony, we should be challenged. And always I believe any testimony that we share should be word-related. Anything that we share, it should be related to the Word of God, then there would be edification in the body of Christ. So then may God help us in the future, whoever shares the testimony, they may relate what happened unto them with the Word of God. Then there would be a newness in the testimony, and it will be a great challenge for all of us. So may God help us. Now we are in the last leg of our ministry. Today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, then shh, I'm gone. <laughs> uh, so pray for me, and uh, uh, God may help me to do His work. I want to conserve my energy for Delhi, so that's why I'm sitting and preaching, <laughs> because there's a great responsibility there also. So shall we turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 22. Mark's Gospel, 11, 22. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. May our living and loving Savior bless the reading and meditation of His precious word unto all of us. It is a great subject when we talk about faith. Right from the beginning of the Bible and to the end, that uh, expression comes so many ways, not just by word, it is also implied in so many ways it comes. It is because the, it is because of the failure of faith, disobedience came into existence. And that is how the sin entered into the world. Eve disbelieved God's truth and believed devil's lie. You should understand this. She believed devil's lie and disbelieved God's truth. That is, how does it happen? Lack of faith in God's word. So, we right from the beginning, we find how Satan sows the seeds of doubt in our hearts concerning the word of God. Same thing has happened that day in the Garden of Eden, and he yielded. So, faith is very, very important. If you lose faith, you have lost everything. So, having accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, because of faith, it all happened because of faith. Romans, you may be knowing all this, but I want to remind you, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See how wonderful state statement. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So that puts the word of God of, of very important, important, great importance is given to the word of God. It is through the word of God, faith gets inculcated by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that is why in order that our faith in him may be strengthened, and multiplied, you have to pay attention to the Word of God. I was telling uh, on the other day, right from the age of 13, when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I developed a lot of love for the Word of God. 
it is only through the word of god your faith is multiplied strengthened because we, as we live in this worked world sinful world wretched world with this corruptible body in this corruptible world we need faith to live we are seeing that song also we were singing we should walk by faith not by sight those who walk by sight they end up into great chaos and confusion for themselves so we have to avoid by the word of god that is why word of god is of paramount importance not only here you should also read the word of god at home and meditate the word of god and also do according to the word of god then your faith in him would be multiplied because that is we required faith is not a thing that is to be practiced by the whole time servants of god or the pastors every believer who have come to the knowledge of the lord jesus christ should live by faith not by sight word of god says very clearly just shall live by faith what a word with much force it says just shall live by faith just means the righteous those who are made righteous through the blood of the lord jesus christ should live by faith faith is very important ingredient of christian life what is faith on the other day i was saying i do not know whether you remember f a i t h faith means what forsaking all i trust him forsaking all i trust him that is faith see hebrews hebrews chapter 11 a chapter which deals with the faith there we have the wonderful list of the heroes of faith hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 now faith here we have the definition of faith now faith is the substance substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen what is faith evidence of things not seen you have not seen but by faith everything becomes tangible everything you are able to see see what peter says first peter chapter 1 verse 8 first peter chapter 1 verse 8 whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory so that is how we came to christ we have not seen him but yet loved him we have not seen him yet we believed on him that is the beauty of the great complete eternal salvation that we received through the blood of the lord jesus christ now as a result of this faith we have the joy unspeakable and full of glory that is the result of our salvation so faith is something which we may not understand it but yet we believe implicit faith implicit faith word of god says like this i believe that's all no doubt whatsoever all the things that are written in the bible should believe that is how you accept when you accept the lord jesus christ as your personal lord and savior you believe everything that is written in the bible is a fact factual it is not concocted or fictitious stories they are all happenings the spirit of god moved the prophets and saints of old who penned these wonderful lines and preserved this word of god for us in the beginning in the first century they did not have bibles in their hands as we have full fledged bible old testament and new testament but yet they believed yet they believed we did not have they did not have the convocations like this special meetings like this and they were all from home to home house to house they were gathering that was a different thing situation altogether but yet they had such faith where they could give their lives for the cause of christ where they could put themselves on the altar of god and give their lives they did not care for their lives that is the faith they had now we have the bible in our hands and we have the servants of god to preach and expound the word of god unto us so that we may understand it and also obey to the word of god so but yet uh, there is something wrong in our either understanding or not following or disbelieving but we are not able to maintain that initial faith by initial faith we are made his by initial faith we are made his 
according to uh, John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12. If you believe, you, be, you have the power to become the sons of God, children of God. Now, by continuous faith, by consistent faith, you are kept His. You understand? Made His and kept His. There is a difference. That means you will continue to be in the fold of God. You will continue to worship Him. You will continue to serve Him. You will continue to do everything for the cause of Christ. And you will continue to sacrifice anything for the cause of Christ. Continuity, consistency is of paramount importance. So faith is a very important ingredient. Now if you refer to the uh, Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, we shall read uh, 5 to 9, these verses alternatively, then you will understand the importance of faith. Second Peter chapter 5, chapter 1, verses 5 to 9, we shall read responsibly. Read with the spirit of understanding. I am reading verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Uh, read all of you. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. Verse 7. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness to charity. Read. For if these things be in you, and abound, uh, they may, you that you may neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from these his old sins. So, faith is very important if you have carefully read it. We understand all the Christian virtues are built up on the foundation of faith. All the wonderful blessings that we have received are built up on the ground of faith. See verse 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Add to your faith virtue. And then virtue uh, to uh, temperance, you know, all those things, other things also will come. Faith, virtue, then uh, knowledge, and then uh, temperance, and uh, patience, and uh, godliness, all these things. Faith is the basis on which other things are piled up, other things are built up. If there is no faith in you, maybe you are saved by grace through faith, and that's all. But you should continue in that faith. How did you have that faith? It is through the word of God. You have heard, according to Romans 10, 17, we have read, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, in order to continue in faith, you should continue to hear the word of God. You should continue to obey to the word of God. There should be a continual obedience to the word of God. Anybody who does not practice this, they, though they come to the house of God, though they may be worshipping, though they may be praying, though they may be preaching, though they may be singing and do anything around in the house of God, they cannot survive in this world as a believer of the Lord. You should have faith in God. You know, it is only that will sustain you. You know, for everything you should trust Him. You should have faith on Him. Word of God says in Psalm 62, verse 8, Trust the Lord at all times. That means have faith in God all times, all through your life. And then very second line in the same verse says, Pour out your soul in the, pour out your heart in the presence of the Lord. That means if you have faith in God, if you have trust in God, then you will also come on your knees and pray unto the Lord. How much prayer life that we have? 24 hours. Maybe 8 hours according to the doctor's counsel you may sleep. Some people live even 11 hours also. Uh, but uh, how much time you are giving to the Lord? How much time you exercise that faith and read the word of God? How much time you give for the quiet time in the presence of the Lord? Mark's Gospel, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 6 says, Enter into your closet and shut the door. That is a very important expression. Enter into your closet and shut the door. And that means, withdraw yourself from all the entanglements of the world and be totally in the presence of the Lord. 
that is actually a great effort you have to make otherwise it is very difficult because so many thoughts keep uh, you know rushing in our minds from all those things you should withdraw and be quietly in the presence of the lord then you will find wonderful things will happen you will have the word to share with others you will have something to share with others for the edification of the body of christ and thus you will fulfill that word in roman chapter 1 verse 12 in mutual faith there is comfort so faith is very very important if there is no faith the word of god says see uh, verse 9 uh, here first second peter verse 9 but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins i heard about an incident one uh, rich man was about to die and his son uh, a fellow who is very naughty uh, he wanted that a lot of money should be given in his name out of his property and then he went to him and that whatever notes that have been made uh, that uh, what do you call something uh, uh, you know a paper is made as if you know it is all handed over to various people his relatives or this thing then in that paper in his name he wanted to write so many you know uh, lakhs or something so he has put some amount and asked him to put zeros so many zeros uh, he said daddy now put another zero like for the, that man is almost dying so he has put some zeros more zeros he was very happy and then uh, he was very happy to see that paper and all that and that was a ink he ink ink pen he wrote all those things and then he came and as he was going and coming out of the this thing he paper he had he was holding it in the hand rain was coming <laughs> rain was dropping and the water drops fell on that paper and the initial one is there that is got you know written up it it got wind wound up washed out because of the water that fell on that and that one is gone then what is the value of these zeros there is no value that one is faith one is important the very thing that is mentioned first that controls the other thing so faith is very important ingredient whether you are serving the lord as a whole time worker or you are working or earning money yet you should live by faith yet you should live by faith brother bakshi used to say for everything he would pray and decide what god would tell him to do and he believed on him and god had been guiding him at right junctures in his life and that has become a great, great blessing for him and also for those who followed him and see hebrews chapter 11 after giving the wonderful details of the heroes of faith see what he says in chapter 12 hebrews now chapter 12 verse 1 therefore seeing we also are composed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us see a so great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so daily we said run the race so so many witnesses that we have around us cloud of witnesses all those things mentioned by faith by faith by faith we read all those verses in the 11th chapter of hebrews what great things they have wrought through faith they are very great challenge again and again we find whenever you find time read 11th chapter of hebrews that will at least inculcate some sort of confidence and faith in your heart what great things they have done by faith they have accomplished great things by faith by faith so same thing by faith we can also do great things experience great things in our lives you may have that faith that they had because the god whom they believe is same god whom we also believe the god whom they worship same god we also worship because he is the same god never changing never failing god so whatever power that was available at that time to the apostles of old same power with same intensity is available to every one of us but the difference is they appropriated that power and enjoyed that power so they could express that power but we are 
we have reduced ourselves as mere appreciators of that power, not appropriating that power. That will not do anything. You know, message in Tarata, so by him, the prayer was there. Definitely, I know if somebody says like that, he has not received the word of God. And some people say once, uh, uh, Brother um, Bandar Shamil, he is called Bandar Shamil because Bandar is Machili Patnam. He was there for several years, so he is known as Bandar Shamil. He is from Kadapa. Kadapa has got some sort of uh, language uh, accent. Uh, for others, uh, Vishaka Patnam, Vijayavada people, they cannot understand that language. Telugu only, but it is a little bit different with their accent. So he was posted to Machili Patnam. First time from Karpa, he is posted to Majli Patnam. He is full of word of God. And then uh, first meeting took place and wonderful blessings uh, were there. Everybody enjoyed the word of God. And then one man came and told him, Anna, brother, Vakyam and so the word of God is very good, but any ni bash bhagle de anat. Your language is not that good. Your language is not good, uh, but word of God is very good. Then he said, Arya, you are not born again, Ananda. <laughs> if you are born again, you will not see the language. You will not say what and how he is preaching. You will get the word. So you should have a right scriptural, spiritual attitude to what you hear. And that will inculcate faith more and more. Word of God is the basis. Through word of God, they believed. Rahab, how did she believe? She Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. How faith got inculcated in the heart of Rahab, the harlot, and she was preserved along with her family. <coughs> Verse 9. And she said unto them, I know that the Lord has given you the, the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. See, they have been hearing. No, she had been hearing. And again, next verse is, 10th uh, verse, For we have heard, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when he came, when he came out of Egypt and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. Verse 11. And as soon as we heard these things, you know, as soon as we heard these things, heard these things, heard these things, at that time there was no Bible. There was no word of God printed. Word of mouth, the word of God spread. The word, through word of mouth, things that have happened in the midst of the children of Israel, what God has done, what God has wrought for them, they were all spread through the word of mouth. From mouth to mouth, mouth to mouth, it went across the cities, across the towns, and everywhere it is tom tom So Rahab says, we have heard. So the word of God is very important. When we hear the word of God, that should inculcate faith and confidence in us. And Rahab was saved, delivered from the power of darkness, and she became a part of the family of the children of Israel, we will understand afterwards. So faith is very important. It makes things which are not tangible, which are not seen, they are made very precious in front of your eyes. Faith. By faith, walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, walls of Jericho fell down. How did they fall? Six days, six times. Seventh day, seven times they went. That's all they did. And the walls of Jericho fell down. Do you believe? Such mighty walls. On the walls of Jericho, Rahab's house was there. All other houses were there. Such a mighty walls. Very wide walls. And they have fell down. Think of it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 says, By faith, walls of Jericho fell down. In the British times, there used to be Sunday schools. For Sunday school, teachers are appointed for salaries. And also there used to be inspectors of schools also, Sunday schools. So once uh, Sunday school was going on, the inspectors comes and says to the teacher, teacher, you please sit down, I want to ask some questions to the children. So the inspectors asked one girl, hey, tell me who destroyed the walls of Jericho? That girl, Fabergast, she got up and started crying. 
she could not understand why this girl is crying. Then she asked another boy, tell me who destroyed the walls of Jericho? That were also started crying. <laughs> this lady got, you know, confused why the children are crying at the question. Then she asked another girl, now tell me, please, stand up and tell me, who destroyed the walls of Jericho? Not me, she cried like that. I have not done it. That is what she said. Then she got shocked. And then she looked at the teacher. Hey, what is going on? And then she looked at the teacher. The teacher says, Madam, my children are very sincere. They will not do such things. <laughs> my children are very sincere. They will not do such things. So they don't have a proper understanding because they have got superficial knowledge for salary they were doing the work. But we, God's people, saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the word of God with us. We have wonderful scriptural illustrations, wonderful scriptural basis for us to believe. And how about our faith? Do we have that faith, initial faith that we had? See, First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5, uh, Paul, while writing to Timothy, he says like this, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 12, having damnation, because they have cast off their first faith. They have cast off their first faith. Did it happen to you? You have cast off your first faith, and so you started depending upon your self-will, self-knowledge, self-power, whatever power you have. Whoever you are, whatever you are, you should totally depend upon Him. That dependence will come only through hearing the Word of God. It is only through hearing the Word of God you will trust Him more and more. And then God can do wondrous things. Here He says, they have cast off their first faith. If you cast off the first faith, then what happens? Come to Revelation, please. Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left the first love. If you leave first faith, automatically that first love also goes. What a passion that you had. What an urge that you had in the beginning when you were born again. Do you have same passion, same urge, same love for the house of God, same desire? to have fellowship with the fellow believers or it has, has it got, you know, down and down. You should maintain it always. That will come only when you continue to hear the Word of God. By hearing continuously the Word of God, your faith also in God will be multiplied more and more. So how much you are listening, being here, are you just being present physically and mind is somewhere else, you cannot get anything. In our assembly, whatever we preach, we also give notebooks to everybody, all the believers, notebooks and with a pencil and all that we give. And everybody notes down certain important things when the word of God is given. That way you will have a, some sort of memory, remember things when it is preached. So faith is something that you should have continuously until the Lord would come again. Otherwise, with all the blessings that you have received, with all the uh, knowledge that you have, still there would be a tendency to go away from the Lord. If faith is lost, everything is lost. And what happens? Faith is gone, love is gone. Then what happens? Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Then it affects the works also. That is why he says, now from whence you have fallen. See chapter 2, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So, we have to have that initial faith. Just examine ourselves. Do have that faith, that faith that gave you great, complete, eternal salvation. That is how you are here in the presence of the Lord. And you should have that faith increased day after day, multiply day after day. Then that will keep you in good stead in the fold of God. Then you will have 
that power of prayer also you will enjoy when peter was jailed when peter was in the prison house what was said concerning the situation at the time see he acts as apostles chapter 12 <coughs> acts as apostles chapter 12 verse 5 if you have faith you will do this acts of the apostle chapter 12 verse 5 peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him it does not say some people are collected there and praying prayer was offered of the church it speaks of the unity of the body of christ it speaks of the unity of the church together they joined their hearts together and then prayed unto the lord for the deliverance of peter and peter was delivered you know that peter in a miraculous way he was delivered you know there is another thing that when he came and knocked the door roda did not open it but the fact is he was delivered from the prison house that is the power of prayer you know you pray god will answer your prayer according to the good pleasure of his will you know you see uh, but the boxing is to say to the ministers if you don't know how to take the prayer meeting if you don't have any word you will say read Jer- jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 you see book of jeremiah 33 verse 3 call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not but he will answer our prayers according to the good pleasure of his will by faith only you pray but he will answer your prayer but according to the good pleasure of his will paul a great man of god who established churches all over at the time he prayed oh lord there is a thorn in my flesh which is causing a lot of pain oh lord i am not able to bear it remove it god answered his prayer by saying my grace is sufficient for you in that he said paul that that thorn would be there thorn he did not remove but he answered him by saying my grace is sufficient for you to bear that pain sometimes lord does that you have to that's why when you pray lord let thy will be done paul himself did not know concerning that thorn so he prayed remove that thorn but god's purpose is different so that's why whenever you pray for anything lord this is my request but let thy will be done you operate you will see the difference this is my request this is my problem this is the job that i want or this is the transfer i want or this is the promotion i want this is what i want lord for my children and for my family but let thy will be done and whatever way thou will transfer i will accept it and paul accepted it and that's how he enjoyed great power see those verses are famous and i really enjoy those verses second corinthians chapter 12 9 and 10 second corinthians chapter 12 9 and 10 <coughs> i am reading kindly look into the bible please and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness how do you understand it most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ sake for when i am weak then i am strong ah, triumphant victorious words of apostle paul that is the power behind his work so much he trusted him what would happen to him he did not care whatever lord would say he accepted it he asked the, for the removal of the thorn but lord said my grace is sufficient for you and encouraged him and he trusted him so sometimes god breaks us to rebuilds us and uh, mold us to mold us and to mend us so that we may be acceptable unto him and we may be able to do the work there is a channel in hyderabad broken to build i have given my testimony to the channel it is there 
in the YouTube. Broken to build, they believe God breaks you so that you could be rebuilt. If you read Jeremiah chapter 18, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 4, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 4, and the vessel that he made of day was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel and seemed God to the potter, seemed good to the potter to make it. The vessel got marred in the hands of the potter. In his own hands, as he is molding us, mending us, we are broken many times. In his own hands. But yet God has got a purpose and he will rebuild us again. But you have to trust him. You should depend upon him. Don't never go by sight, but go by faith. Walk by faith. Word of God tells us. Walk by faith. Come what may, O Lord, I will walk by faith. Whatever may be the situation in my life, I will continue to follow and serve you. So we have ample evidences in the word of God. When you have faith, what great things God has, God would do, that we find in a large way in the life of Abraham. God asked Abraham to offer Isaac, his only son, he says, thine only son, Isaac, offer as a sacrifice. Then early morning he gets up, we find in Genesis chapter 22, early morning he gets up, take his servants, take the wood and the fire, and then walking toward the place where Lord has been telling him on Mount Moriah. As they were walking, on the end route, he tells the servants, you stay back, we will, we will go and serve, worship the Lord and come back. See the faith of Abraham. And servants stayed back and they were going. As they were walking down, his son asked uh, his father Abraham, Father, behold the fire and the wood, where is the lamb? That is a great question. The you know, son is asking, Behold the fire and the wood, where is the lamb? Because Isaac had always seen whenever father offered burnt offering, there was a lamb, there was a fire and the wood. Now here, strange thing, the lamb is not there. Then I wrote in my Bible, who is that father whose heart will not melt when he, his son is asking? Because he knew he is going to offer, to offer a sacrifice, Isaac only. Now that boy is asking, behold the fire and the wood, where is the lamb? He knows he is the lamb, but yet he is unmoved. That is the faith. That is the faith. You know why? He had that faith, such confidence, which is called in Romans chapter 4, verse 12. Romans 4, it is totally dedicated to the faith of Abraham. In verse 20, it says, he had strong faith. We used to have, we should have strong faith in God. All our problems would be resolved. See Hebrews chapter 11 where the strong faith is explained. <coughs> With the what faith he has kept Isaac on the altar, we know from here. Hebrews chapter 11, 17, 18, and 19. I would like to read for you. Hebrews chapter 11, 17, 18, and 19. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up the only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting, listen to this, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. See? As for Abraham, he has already offered him because he bound him and kept it on the altar and took the sword by that action. In his heart of hearts, he has laid something which was very close to the heart on the altar of God. That is how there is a great commendation came. He was stopped not to hurt him. And then he said like this, we, we find in Genesis chapter 22, verse 12, what do we read there? Now I know, now I know that thou fearest God. Bah. Just to test him, whether he fears or not, he had to be, we had to pass through such testing times. See, that is how God tests us, whether you de really fear Him or not, many times. It disturbs our nest. My nest was disturbed in 1989. And then 90, 91, I had severe problems at home. 
but in all those stretching times we stood very firm we consecrated those very trials very troubles very torments unto god i and my children and our faith was not tilted our faith was not affected by anything that has happened to god happened to us our prayer was e jeevita yatralo emi sambhavinchina mahimani ke o prabhu idi ena dina prarthana that is what our belief is whatever may happen to us lord through these very things thy name may be glorified that should be our scriptural spiritual attitude towards god then your faith is maintained all through your life until we breathe our last until he would come again we should continue in faith in order to continue in faith we should continue to look on to him we should continue to look on to him on the cross the crucified cross where we find the matchless love great love everlasting love with which lord has loved us that is why i said on the other day also that song i like king of my life where the chorus is i said earlier also lead me to calvary he says why lest i forget gethsemane lest i forget thy agony lest i forget thy love for me lead me to calvary again and again we ought to be led <coughs> to the cross of calvary so that our faith is maintained otherwise if faith is gone everything is gone think about it if there is no faith there cannot be any prayer if there is no faith there cannot be any worship if there is no faith there cannot be christian life at all so we need to have faith in the foundation on which everything else is built up so may god help us that we may have this sort of faith we find this very clearly well explained pronounced amplified in the life of stephen the first martyr see Revel- romans chapter 6 Uh, acts of the apostles please acts of the apostles chapter 6 there we find concerning stephen some wonderful testimonies are mentioned here we shall read verse 8 and stephen full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people full of faith he was full of faith that made him to stand aloof from the other people at that time that is why he was full of faith he did not care for his life stone after stone was falling on him when he was stoned to death but he did not tilt he did not you know say that i don't trust the lord i don't follow the lord he just gave his life and also said they forgive them for they know not what they are doing so that is how if you are, if you have that faith in god as stephen had got then you will have wonderful traits we find in the word of god what all things that he had in his life you know, if you see what some of them you can see in the same chapter we will find he was full of faith and full of power when you are full of faith you will be full of power and you will also be full of Uh, the courage and also full of word of god in his life he narrates in the 17th 7th chapter in the brief history of the children of israel he narrates in a brief way he is full of word of god he is full of sacrifice full of courage and he gave his life so if you have faith in god you are prepared to give your life that is the higher level of christian life god wants us to live it is not just superficial life you live and go away you have to have that commitment that dedication that consecration that surrender that submission to god's will to continue to walk in his ways so then as you walk your children also will follow you that is a wonderful thing as for me and my house we will serve the lord that sort of spiritual scriptural attitude one must have then god can do wondrous things marvelous things he will do you will have faith that's all you will have faith everything else he will do it for you that is why disciples one day he pray they prayed unto the lord uh, 
Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 5. <coughs> and the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Increase our faith. That is the prayer that we should offer, offer to the Lord. Lord, the faith that I have is not sufficient. O oh Lord, increase my faith on you. That means total dependence on the Lord. We have read some time ago in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 58, it is written that he could not do more miracles there because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief, he could not do more miracles that is applicable to every one of us, that is relevant to every one of us in this world. Because of our lack of faith, because of unbelief, Lord is not able to do much more than what he has already done. He has done great things in your life, but in Lord's sight, they are not sufficient. They, he wanted to do much more, but we ourselves are the hindrances because of unbelief. We are not able to trust him as much we should trust him because we bend towards our material things that we have. Ah, Nakemle, you know, that attitude, hey, what is, I have got everything. That, you know, sub, all, you know, sufficiency or fullness of bread, lot of leisure, word of God says you disdain things concerning the Lord. So, in that uh, you should surrender more and more. When Lord is blessing you more and more, you should surrender more and more. Because <coughs> faith is such an important ingredient in life, when the Lord would come again, many times I have quoted this verse last time also when I came. Luke's Gospel 18, verse 8, second portion says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Remember this verse? Luke's Gospel 18, verse 8. Look into the Bibles, please. Luke's Gospel 18, verse 8, second portion says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? On the earth means in you and me, you know, shall he find faith? Because there is so much attraction, distractions in this world. If you are distracted from all these things, then how can you enjoy that faith? If you don't maintain that Christian life tight, you know, according to the word of God, how can you enjoy that faith? Many times a lot of tests and trials come. Very easily we yield to the temptations. In Gudur, in our own place, there is a mother who is, a, who is from a Hindu background, very strong sister. <coughs> Husband is a believer also. They were, they were blessed with two children. When they were very small, one day, it, the story goes, it is talked about in Guru. She made chicken curry, <laughs> nice chicken curry she made and served the children and for rice and then chicken curry and said, let us pray. And then both these boys closed their eyes because their chicken curry, <laughs> lot of bhakti has come to them. And, uh, you know, they closed their eyes. Mummy prayed for them, for the food. As they were, as mummy was praying, the little fellow is naughty. He opened the eyes and saw the brother's plate. That is a human tendency. We see others what, <laughs> you know, you see brother's plate and he found some interesting piece in that plate. Then he took that piece and put it in his plate and then closed his eyes again. Mummy prayed, mummy's prayer is over. Then the elder brother saw his plate, that mukha is missing. <laughs> then he complained to his mother, Mummy, mummy, see what this fellow has done when you are praying. He has taken out my piece and kept it in his plate. Then the mummy got wild and said, hey, hey, how many times I have to tell you? Whenever you are tempted, whenever you are disturbed by the Saturn, you say, Saturn, get thee behind me. Why did you not say it this time? That fellow very quietly said, mummy, I said exactly the same thing. Get thee behind me, Saturn. But what can I do? He went back and pushed me forward. <laughs> to take it. That is how very easily, very easily we yield to the various things as that come on our way. So we lose that faith. If you have faith, you will never do such things. You will never yield to any temptation that come on your way. Faith will make you more and more stronger and stronger. 
to face anything, any lack in your life. That is why Paul says triumphantly in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, uh, verse 4, verse 13, our favorite verse in our family. I can do, I can is a wonderful word which is taken from there in the Bible and use it in the, all the managements in the world. I can, I can. You know, all the executives, all the, you know, officials, they have to say this, they say, I can. That means I have the ability to do this. So what did Paul say? I can do all these things through Christ who strengthens me. So that is the faith and confidence we should have. My Lord will strengthen me. I will have faith on Him we should trust. When you trust Him, then wonderful things will happen to us. And that is why Paul, while writing to Corinthian believers, he says like this, Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, you examine yourself whether you are in faith. Maybe you are coming to the house of God and you are doing various errands, various sacrifices, but do you have faith? If you have faith, you will surrender at the feet of the Lord. Total surrender. Whatever you have, your time, your treasure, your talent, everything you will surrender and you will be guided by Him. And thus God's name would be glorified. May God bless this word. We will see more tomorrow. Shall we pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, our gracious and wonder-working God, thank Thee for the word ministered unto us. Help that we may inculcate this faith more and more in our lives so that we may be blessed and our families may be blessed, our children may be blessed, our church also may be blessed. So Lord, help us. Pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen.